Uh, I had the privilege, I don't know if any of you saw it on Facebook or whatever, but uh, the church that I pastored in Sparks asked me to speak a couple of Sundays ago. And, and even though it was great to see everybody and uh, be a part of uh, a group of people that we love very much, it just wasn't home. <laughs> We're home today. Thank you for making this our church home, our church family. It's so good to be back. And uh, we did have a great time, though. Uh, I think I got a little too much sun. Everybody says I'm looking tanned, you know, so hey, all right, you know. But uh, I, I think I'm a little too old to worry about stuff like that. But uh, anyway, thank you um, for uh, all the things that you do. Uh, I have to be honest with you, as I spent time in Lake Tahoe with my new grandson and my daughter and all of the family, we just had a great time. And and God gave me rest and gave me time to just be with them. I didn't worry uh, and all of those things. I, I knew that, that you all were here and continuing to build the things that only God can do through his people. And uh, so uh, thank you for that time of rest. And, and I have to say, as much as I love my grandson, it was nice to just have a week with Gail and I. <laughs> Grandkids are great, but who me, a week long, all day long. Man, that was, that was crazy stuff. But uh, thank you. It, it's good to be back. And man, weren't the kids great today? Man, they do such a good job. Uh, Katie's not in here, but I, I'm going to talk with her after church. I think the worship team should do hula. What do you think? <laughs> Even instruments. What do you think, Eric? Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but anyway, uh, they just did such a great job. I hope they encouraged your heart. And you know what I love so much about these songs that we do is that all they are is Scripture. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the theology, do you, when you just read the Scripture? Wow, and what a great uh, passage that was. One last thing, I'm just so thankful for uh, all of our uh, media people and all they do. Uh, I don't know who did the the uh, the slide about the food. Bruce, is, was that... Was that yours? The slide about the food, whichever one of you. Uh, I want to find out where you buy toilet paper with glasses. Uh, I, I think that's pretty cool. So uh, anyway, wherever you can buy toilet paper with glasses, that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find that place. Well, good morning again. And uh, I have to be honest with you today. It, it's um, said some things here to maybe bring a little lightness, but... Um, this is, a, uh, this is a tough day. Um, as we near a time where God is going to bring renewal and revival to our church, and I believe that with all of my heart, where He's bringing a couple of amazing new staff people. You're going to get to hear from Kara in a couple of weeks, but were you, could, how could you not be blessed by Tanner? <laughs> What, what, a, what spirit-filled messages. I, I, I still am thinking about how I want to be the kind of a person that when I pray, I'm not surprised that God answers prayer. <laughs> I don't want to go, oh, I want to just go, wow, look, this is what God does when we pray. God answers prayer. And uh, through all of the things that I've gone through in my life, and particularly even this last year, to get the image that, that, that God cries Tears for me is a very powerful image. I don't know about you. Uh, a God who cries. Who would ever think up a God who cries? Well, we don't think God up. God is who He is, and He tells us who He is in His Word. And I'm so thankful that they're coming, and I have such great expectation about what God can do together through our unity here uh, as the body of Christ. New hopes and dreams all of those things. And so uh, over the next uh, two to three months, uh, God has really led me to preach about who we are as the church, who we are as Bridge Nazarenes. And that was going to be the title of the sermon this morning. Uh, and I look forward to preaching that in full for about 10 or 11 weeks. And uh, I, I really think it's going to be a powerful time, a time for the Spirit to speak to us about our lives, not only in individual Individually, but our lives together in the body of Christ. Uh, but in my planning, uh, I had one date that stubbornly stuck out that I just couldn't figure out how to fill it. 
I had it all planned out all the way through Advent. I go out about six months. Now, you know, if, if the God uh, speaks to me, you know, I always have an open heart for that. But I like to make sure that I'm teaching you all the Word and what the Word says and I'm listening to the Spirit. And so I had everything planned out through Christmas, but there was this one stubborn date and it was like it just was staring at me. And so I thought, well, okay, the Lord just wants me to wait until we get to that date and He'll give me the message for that day. Uh, well, now I know why uh, he has that date open, because I'm pushing everything down a week today, um, because as an American <clears throat> and as a Christian pastor, as your pastor, altered my plans last night. And uh, if you're like me, we're all reeling from what happened in our country yesterday. Don't want to get overly emotional. <laughs> Don't not here today to talk about politics. I'm really not. If, if you think I am, then you're going to be very disappointed. It's not 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 why my heart is disturbed today. I don't uh, have anything today to say about how anyone should feel today. <laughs> I know some of the things I'm feeling: <laughs> disappointment, frustration, a little bit of anger poured in. Uh, but I. I had all of these things going on in my heart and my spirit last night, and God just clearly, as a bell, told me to push everything back a week. And so I'm going to share with you this morning what I believe He gave me. Um, how do I know He gave it to me? Because I really searched. <laughs> I just went outside. My kids have a little patio back there. Their garage is detached, and they've just created a little family living area out there. And I just went out there with my Bible, <laughs> and I just opened it up. And I said, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do tomorrow, but I know that you've got something for your people, and I know right now you've got something for me. Um, as I sat there, uh, I went to several different places. Man, I went to Lamentations. I went to, uh, to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes. I said, do you want me to go to Revelation? I just, and then as God so often does uh, when we need it the most, I just said, God, you got to help me. And I opened it to Jeremiah chapter 29. <laughs> and I read Jeremiah chapter 29 and God began to pour his spirit into my heart. Um, again, I don't have anything to say today about how anybody should feel about what happened in our country but God's given me this word today for us. Receive it as the Holy Spirit would give it to you, as he would teach it to you. So I ask you today, if you would, if you like to follow along in your Bibles, to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29 or follow along uh, as we put it on the board back there. Jeremiah was a contemporary of Daniel. If you've been here uh, through the summer, you know that we looked at uh, the book of Daniel and we looked at this young adult teenager along with his friends and and the miracles they did in their lives because they were compromised and they always did what God asked them to do. Whatever the cost, wh wh whatever was going on in their lives, taken away from their home, put in a place where they, they had no earthly understanding about what was going on, all the people around them trying to make Babylonians out of them, they determined that it didn't matter where they were or what they were experiencing, they were going to live for God, trust God, and do what God asked them to do. And Daniel, and in so many other places, in so many other ways that you see in Scripture, when God's people obey Him and do what He asks them to do, God always works in their lives. Today, uh, Daniel had a contemporary, and his name was Jeremiah. And Jeremiah still lived in an occupied land uh, that used to be Israel. And he was there with a remnant of people who were not killed or who were not taken off captive in the Babylonian exile. And Jeremiah is, is called the weeping prophet. How many of you would like to be called by God to be the weeping prophet? <laughs> an amazing calling in life, and yet you see that through all of the things that, that, that Jeremiah saw, he knew one thing, and that is that God would always be faithful to his people. And so God gave him, during this time of exile, these words to give to God's people who were trying to make sense of what had happened to their nation. <laughs> they were looking out there, and they're going, 
oh, I don't understand this, I don't understand that, and where he, they just could not make sense of everything that was going on. And so he pens this letter to them. And we begin the letter here in the very first verse of chapter 29. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent to Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles, to the priests, the prophets, and all other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jehoiakim and the Queen Mother, the court officials and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the skilled workers and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. And so he entrusted the letter to Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and to Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. This is a really amazing letter. I'm going to read some of it to you this morning that, that really applies, I think, to where we find ourselves and where we live today. But I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little violated uh, by what has happened, uh, that someone would try to kill... Uh, President Trump, former President Trump, who is now running for re-election and may be the next president of our country. Now, I have to be honest with you today, I may lose a lot of you today. That's okay. <laughs> I'd be up here today saying this if it was President Biden, if it were President Obama, if it were President Bush, whoever it was. I'm feeling a great sense today of being violated <laughs> as an American <laughs> as a human being, and as a person. And this violation, again, transcends party affiliation. But it shows today that we are the people of God who in many ways are kind of living in exile. <laughs> we, we, we are living in a time where the things of God, the things that are important to God, no longer seem to be important in the society and the culture that we live in. And as I sat there and as I read this letter, Jeremiah's words really soothed the savage thoughts that were in my soul last evening. And his message has brought peace to my heart, and I hope it will to yours also today. Listen to what God says to these people through this letter from Jeremiah. Now this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Wow. As I read those words, it was just as if God was telling me, we as God's people, we've got to hold the line, folks. <laughs> this is not a time to despair. This is not a time to give up. This is not a time to do anything other than continue every single day of our lives to live for God. Yeah. And you know, the most important thing we can do today, I believe, is to continue to prosper as God's people in confusing times. Now, I want you to know what I mean by prosper. Prosper doesn't mean that we get everything we want. It doesn't mean that God keeps us away from bad things. But God has promised that as the people of God, He will care for us. He will give us the things we need during the most difficult periods of our lives, even when it affects our country. The scripture here tells us that what are we supposed to do in the midst of, of, the, of exile? What are we supposed to do when the world is trying to make Babylonians out of us? What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to serve God. And we need to double down today on everything that that means. We need to serve God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. You know what else it says? We need to keep raising our children. We need to keep having children. And everybody said? A few of you. All right. 
We need to keep having children. We need to believe that God is in control of this world. Sometimes I'll hear people say, I've never heard anybody here say this, but I'll hear people say, I'm not going to bring any more kids in this world. This is such a horrible and awful world. It doesn't matter whether it's a horrible and awful world. We're the people of God. Jeremiah tells the people, keep serving me. Keep serving God. Raise your children in the faith. Have more children. Raise them in the faith. Let your sons and daughters come together and get married and create families. All of these things we do no matter what is happening in this world. Why? Because we're the example of God to this world. He says we are to seek peace and we are to seek prosperity and we are to pray for our nation, pray for our country, pray for our children. Everything we do, we are to be focused on what we're going to find out in a minute is the promise of God. I couldn't uh, help after having my heart encouraged last night. I made my way back into the house and Ethan was just before his bedtime. And I walked in there and I said, can I just have a minute? And of course my daughter said, of course. And I walked over to him and you, you know how kids get in ne- netherland. They're kind of... So I knew that, that whatever it was I was going to do, uh, it wasn't going to bother him too much. But I placed my hand on his little head. And I just asked God, Oh God, help us as God's people to create a world for my grandson that is better than the world we live in today. And you know, only God can do that. Only God can create that world, and He creates it through His people who continue to serve Him, raise our children, have children, be an example to the world, seek the peace and the prosperity that God has for us. We need to continue to live for Him. I couldn't help but think about Daniel and his friends. They never compromised, not one time. No matter what it was going to cost them, they never compromised. They never bowed a knee to the evil that was in their world. And God made this promise to them. And he fulfilled it right there in the pages of the book of Daniel. That God would grant them the health and the wisdom and the blessing that they would need to live powerfully for him and that he would shine his favor to bring glory to him. It's important to listen to the warning that comes next, though. Verses 8 and 9 say this, Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Do not let the prophets and the diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams that you want them to have and tell you. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them. Folks, I pray you won't listen to the wrong people. <laughs> I don't have anyone in mind today. If you think I do, that's fine. I just, I'm just telling you, the voices are going to get louder and louder and louder from everywhere in this world. I just want to ask you, don't listen to the wrong people. Don't listen to the people that are not giving you what the Word of God says and what the power of God needs to be in our lives. There will be voices crying out that will not be from God. The Holy Spirit will guide you if you will allow Him to, if you will stay in the Word, if you will follow the Word, if you will do what the Word asks you to do, if you will not compromise it, if you will live it with all your heart, soul, and mind. And yes, today, folks, vote it with all your heart, soul, and mind, okay? But what we've got to do right now is we have got to let the Spirit lead us according to His Word. If we do that, then you will know what you need to believe, who you need to believe, what you need to say, and how you need to behave in this world today. Some of the greatest encouragement in all of Scripture comes next. This is what the Lord says. 
When 70 years are completed for Babylon, do you know that every empire has a timeline? <laughs> every empire that's ever been created is no longer here, okay? They're all gone, just about every one of them. When the 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and to give you a future. You will seek me during those times, and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Amen. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and places where I banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place which I carried you into exile. Please know today, folks, that God's promise is that evil only triumphs for a season, okay? Only for a season. You see that all through God's scripture, evil only triumphs for a season. Sometimes those seasons may seem to be long, but they were to prosper during those times because they knew that God was going to bring them back, that these seasons do not last forever. If you want to read some of the most encouraging parts of the Bible, read Nehemiah and Ezra and Haggai about when God brought them back. And you know what? Whenever God brought them back, they were stronger than when they left. And so today, dear people of God, for our country, for our children, for our grandchildren, believe these promises of God. God's people will always be brought home. Exile always ends. Think about your personal lives. Do you remember when you sin? Do you remember before you knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You were in exile, weren't you? You were trapped and you were buried away from the God Almighty. But God sent you Jesus. And when Jesus came into your life, all of the exile was gone. Freedom reigned in your life. The forgiveness of your sins. The power of the Spirit in your life to live for Him and to live for God. God will always bring us home. And folks, that is true for our country, for our great nation, I believe with all of my heart. God will always bring us back to home. God has a plan for each of us. Remember Daniel. He gave God the same things. Plans to prosper you. To never harm you. To give you and our great nation a hope and a future. But I want to tell you this. What he says there in verse 13. We will only find him if we seek him. Amen. Seek him with all of your heart. And if you seek Him, you will find Him. So folks, keep the faith. Never compromise. Always seek after God. One of the most inspiring hymns to me is a Christmas hymn. How many of you like to sing, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day? <laughs> How many of you know the story behind the bells on Christmas Day? The story of the bells, or heard the bells on Christmas Day, is the story of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, one of the great poets and writers in the history of the United States of America. On the day that he penned all of these words and wrote most of the music to it, imagine being so talented that you could do that in one day. Um, it, was 19, it was 1864, and the Civil War was at its height. During the Civil War, somewhere around three-quarters of a million soldiers died during that war. The greatest casualty list that our country has ever known. In the midst of this, on Christmas morning, word had just recently come to Henry Wadsworth Longfellow 
that his son, an officer in the Union Army, had been shot and gravely, gravely injured during one of the battles in the Army of the Potomac. On this Christmas morning, uh, he did not know if his son was going to survive. To the praise of God, his son eventually did survive. But on this morning, he did not have any idea what would happen. And so a sad, a hurting, and a grieving father, grieving for his son, grieving for his country, grieving for everything that he was seeing around him, he wrote the words to this amazing hymn. (laughs) I'm so glad we kept the hymnals, if not just for today. (laughs) I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth and goodwill to men. I thought how as the day had come that the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And then in despair I bowed my head There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. (laughs) Then, then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong will fail and the right will prevail with peace on earth, and goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime, a peace on earth, goodwill to men. I want you to be encouraged today, people of God. (laughs) God is in control. God is on the throne. God is sees everything from the beginning to the end. He sees it in your life. He sees it in our nation. He sees it everywhere we find ourselves. I pray you will keep the faith, never compromise, and let us just continue to seek after God with all of our heart.